We're so glad you're with us today. We believe this will be an important time in your life. You can feel the presence and power of God as Jeannie shares His Word. Enter in and enjoy His love and compassion coming to you. Jeannie and John care about the challenges you're facing and the dreams and goals you have. So expect God's power to move and do a great work as Jeannie ministers and prays with you. Then, at the end of the broadcast, we'll tell you about the special gifts and resources we have for you. Here now is a word of power for you. It's such a great honor to have you with me. Thank you for joining me. This is Jeannie Alcott. Let me ask you a personal question. When you wake up in the morning, how is your attitude? Most mornings, are you happy and hopeful or perhaps dreading the day? No doubt there are days we all face conditions or questions or burdens that can cause us to have a discouraged attitude or we're put out by something. But our attitude is key to everything. We can wake up and believe this is a new day and God will show me a new way to overcome anything and have a wonderful day. So in this message, God is going to work on our attitude. You know, we can all use some work on it. We need to check on ourselves every so often to make sure something hasn't creeped into our attitude to keep us from experiencing the best of what God has for us. Make sure a wrong attitude hasn't started becoming a part of our thinking or in our spirit. So God has been giving us descriptions of the kinds of attitudes we should have in order to make our lives better. And one of those is the attitude of compassion. Without compassion for others, and really for ourselves at times, we can't reach our fullest potential. It just won't happen. God's Word is firm on saying how we must treat people if we're going to be blessed and see fulfillment and see miracles. I like how one historical scientist put this in perspective. George Washington Carver once said, How far you go in your life depends on your being tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, sympathetic with the striving, and tolerant of the weak and strong, because someday in life you will have been all of these. When we see people around us, remember at some point we have been or may be where they are, so have compassion on them. This is a part of life that sometimes we can overlook, not because we're self-centered or bad people, it's because we're busy people. We're trying to fulfill responsibilities and take care of things and make a living and do a thousand other things. But that's the very reason we need to watch over our attitude and make sure it has compassion in it. As Carver said, be tender with the young because you were young once. Have compassion for the aged because someday you will be. Have sympathy for the one who is striving because we're all striving to accomplish something. And have tolerance for people when they're weak and when they're strong. Have that kind of attitude. An attitude of compassion and understanding. I mean, after all, we want that from God for ourselves, don't we? We want Him to have an attitude of compassion toward us. So, in order to receive that, He requires that we have that same manner toward others. That's how we're going to see the greatest benefits come to people and also to us. There isn't much more that can put us on the road to entering into a new day and a new way than showing the compassion of God. And it can hurt us so much when we don't. I think about a personal experience I had that shows this so well. I had gone to a doctor for a consultation appointment. Nothing serious, just checking out to see if this person could help me in an area. So his assistant had me complete a few tests and questions, and then I waited to see the doctor. I was amazed at his demeanor from the get-go. He was snippy, curt, rude. He was demeaning when I would ask questions. I mean, I'm not a medical doctor, so I didn't have the benefit of the information he had. But I wasn't asking dumb questions. You would think he would be understanding. But when he would answer me or answer John, his whole demeanor was to humiliate us. I almost stopped and said, Did I do something that upset you? to maybe wake him up to realize how he was talking and behaving. No compassion at all. In fact, forget compassion, he wasn't even cordial. You know, your first thought is, what a jerk. But, as always, when someone behaves that way, I realized you never know what a person is experiencing and why they behave that way. So I had the attitude of compassion toward him, which is what I wanted him to have toward me. 
Then, after we got home, I gave John my observations of him and his office. I guess my psychology background was kicking in. But here's what I observed. His assistant, who was in the room at the time, was soft-spoken to the point it was almost as if she was intimidated. She would stand with her shoulders somewhat hunched over, and many times she would put her hands together in front of her, indicating a very submissive, beaten-down type of feeling. So you get the picture of how she appeared. Then the other young woman who was sitting at the keyboard keying in information was nervous, fearful, and concerned about not getting information fast enough as the doctor barked it out. The whole demeanor of that office was one of a boss who had been condescending and ruling by fear. He had a lack of understanding and compassion. Clearly, he had not built them up as employees. Now, do you think I would ever use that doctor in the future? No way. Who knows how many patients don't use him because of his attitude. But he isn't just robbing himself of patients and business. He's robbing himself of the fulfillment of being the kind of person that treats others in kindness and compassion and understanding. Without that, we are less of a person. I know that doctor felt his attitude was making him more superior. But in our eyes, he became less of a person to us. So instead of achieving what his goals should have been to help people improve their health, he was doing the opposite almost. We need to make sure that the goals we have are not being sabotaged by our approach. If we are not having compassion on others and on ourselves, then we will work against what we're trying to achieve. And we won't just hurt our goals, but we will disappoint God. We won't be able to mature in Him and grow in Him the way we desire. Instead of waking up to a new day and seeing a new way for our lives, we wake up to an old day, doing things the old way and not progressing. A perfect example of this in the Bible is the man Rehoboam. His story is in 2 Chronicles chapter 10. He had everything he could want. He was the son of Solomon, which we know Solomon was king of the Israelites, very wealthy, had much power. When he died, Rehoboam became king. When word got out, a delegation of people headed by a man named Jeroboam came to make a request. They had been existing under heavy taxes and yokes of oppression. Now they were appealing to the new king to give them a break and remove the heavy burdens. If so, they would serve him, indicating that if he wouldn't do this, there would be rebellion. So the king said for them to come back in several days to give him time to think about it. That's when he went to his advisors to see what he should do. Those who were older and wiser gave him this counsel. If you will be a servant to this people, be considerate of their needs, and respond with compassion, work things out with them, they'll end up doing anything for you. Good wisdom. Respond with an attitude of compassion to these people. Work it out. If he would respond that way, these people would do anything for him. Smart move. But when the king went to the younger advisors, out of their pride and somewhat fear of the power of the people, they advised the king to be harder on them. Rehoboam took their advice. The Bible says he turned a deaf ear to the people. Because of this, a few days after that, when he gave his decision to the people, they rebelled. Sort of as that doctor. Instead of getting people to stay with him, he drove them away. They made Jeroboam their king, and he took ten of the twelve tribes and reigned over them. That means Rehoboam had just two tribes in Judah over which he reigned. How stupid! The very thing he hoped to achieve by not having compassion and keeping them under his control was the very thing he did not achieve. Remember that passage said he turned a deaf ear to the people. When we turn a deaf ear to the request and cries of people, when it's in our power to respond in compassion, we will hurt not just them, but ourselves. And ultimately, the one who suffers the most will be us. A man once told how he discovered this in his own family. So many bad things happened to various family members, and conditions were so dysfunctional. Then as an adult, when he began to think over the past, he realized these family members had been crying out for help all the time. He said his grandfather was an alcoholic and tried to cope, but then he committed suicide. This man also reflected on how his parents had divorced all of a sudden, it seemed. They had needed help. Also, some of his friends experienced traumatic times because they fell into temptation. He realized all these people were crying out for compassion and help. 
This type of thing is going on around us all the time. Abuse, addictions, sickness, problems. People are desperate for compassion. And we're the ones who can give it to them. And when we give that compassion, we can receive compassion at times in our life. As we realize this, we will enter into a new day and walk in a new way. God has so much to accomplish for us and through us. And the attitude of compassion will help us get there. Now, I know you have your own personal needs today. So it may be hard to think about reaching out in compassion to others. But this is a good message from God's Spirit because He wants you to feel His compassion coming to you. He cares about what you're experiencing, but He also knows for you to grow more in Him and receive more from Him. You'll need to show compassion to others. And I know you're doing that. And I want to pray over you now so you'll have the strength to continue in compassion and to receive it for yourself. Let's pray. Oh, Father, thank you for giving us a spirit of compassion. We know it comes right from your spirit. You're the one who enables us to care and be kind and help others. And my friend desires that so much. And they have done it many times in their life. So we believe all those seeds they have planted are coming back to them. The compassion they need is covering their life. Yes, those are the words. Compassion is covering them. That's because they are faithful to give care and concern to so many people. And they've done it at your direction. So we know you have so much good planned for them. Every time they show consideration to others, it causes you to pour out blessing and help on them. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Compassion is covering your life. That's because you have at times covered others with God's compassion. And as you show that kind of concern, it causes God to pour out on you what he has for your life. See, he honors you for following his word. So John and I are ready to pray over you. We have a spirit of compassion to see you helped and grow in God. So when you get in touch with us and you tell us what you're facing, what your desires are, we pray and intercede. And we want to write to you so we can impart words that can give you greater insight and hope into what God is doing. So get in touch soon. Now, here's a spiritual power line for you. These are words that God gives you so you can speak them out over your life. It's very powerful to speak words of faith. So you go around all day saying off and on, New day, new way for me. New day, new way for me. And we want to make sure you enter into that new day and new way that God has for you. So be sure to get this message. We'll send you all five parts of it and the prayer times. Those times when God can minister to you. So request the message, New Day, New Way. This is offer number AM841, that's 841. You can receive a CD of it for a gift of $8 into the ministry. Or you can get a download of it from our website for a gift of $5. Just call or write or go to alcottministries.org. That's A-L-C-O-T-T ministries dot O-R-G. Our announcer will give you more information. And I encourage you to give out of compassion. This is Jeannie Alcott. God bless you. What a great time in God we had. His anointing has now been imparted to you, and His Word is working to help and bless you. Jeannie and John are here to cover you with prayer and speak words from God over your life. So get in touch with us by calling 918-459-9191 or write to Alcott Ministries, Post Office Box 3400, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013. Or go to our website, at alcottministries.org. Jeannie and John want to receive your prayer requests and offer you special gift resources and also encourage you with our devotionals and inspirational videos. Now, let us know today that you want to request a copy of this message and know that you delight the heart of God as you give into this ministry. And He promises to give back to you in every way. Join us next time to receive a word of power.